Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I am doing a check-in for the second quarter of 2021. So I'll be, I'll be talking about um, my goals and whether I've met them and just sharing some of my tops and bottoms um, that I've read for this quarter. So this is covering April, May and June. So I'm going to have to scoot over <laughs> to leave room for the tables and whatever that I want to put up. But essentially, I didn't meet all of my goals, but I'm very pleased because I met the ones or got very close to the ones that are the most important to me. So my first goals are um, doing a reread a month, reading a graphic novel each month, nonfiction and poetry each month. And those aren't as important to me as the other goals, um, which are to read from my physical and digital bookshelves, to read from my want to read list, um, to read authors that are BIPOC, and to read um, international and Canadian authors more. So those ones are more important to me and those ones I did hit or get very close to. So I'm really pleased with how this quarter went. So I'll just run through this. Um, Rereading is still, I'm still struggling with this. I'm still going to try to include rereads in my TBRs, I think, but there's just so many books out there and I keep setting down rereads and picking up new to me books instead. Um, I only managed one reread that was The Witch of Blackbird Pond, which I thought was okay, I thought was fun, but that was the only reread I accomplished over the past three months. Um, the next is graphic novel. I managed two of those. Um, I read The Best We Could Do, which was a graphic memoir, and Through the Woods, which was like um, graphic short stories that were kind of like fairy tale um, and horror. For nonfiction, I don't know how this happened, but I read six nonfiction. Um, so I doubled my goal there. Um, so for nonfiction, I read The Best We Could Do, which, like I said, is a graphic memoir, Eloquent Rage, um, which is like a series of essays about black feminism, um, Mama Scotch, which is another, um, memoir, The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down, which is kind of like, um, not really a medical biography, cultural history, type of book, um, which is the best nonfiction book I've read all year and all of last year and all of many previous years. I thought it was great. Um, and I'm Afraid of Men, which is a sort of memoir social commentary. Um, for poetry, I met my goal. I read three um, poetry collections. Those were River Woman, um, Daybreak, and 77 Fragments of a Familiar Ruin. Um, then for um, my goal of reading 25% from my physical or digital bookshelves, um, I just smashed this goal and read 50% from my shelves. So I'm very pleased about that. Getting through those books that I actually own. Um, and... My next goal is to read 50% of my books that are on my want to read list rather than reading books to fulfill prompts for a readathon that aren't already on my list because I was doing a lot of that last year and not reading the things that I actually want to be reading. So again, I did really well. I read 76% from my existing want to read list. My goal for reading um, BIPOC authors was 50% and I read 58% from Black, Indigenous and people of colour, which I am pleased with. Um, and I've been fairly consistent with this, so I'm hoping that this is something that will just become second nature to me. So pleased with that. Um, and my last goal was to read 50%, um, basically like non-US and non-UK um, published books because last year I found that overwhelmingly I was reading books from the United States and the UK. So I really wanted half of my reading to be from uh, Canadian authors because I live in Canada and also like other books internationally. 
I was almost there. I read 46%. So while I didn't quite reach it, this is much better than last quarter where I only read 19%. So I am pleased with that, even though I technically didn't reach the goal. So the Canadian books that I read were um, River Woman, which is a poetry collection, Daybreak, which was a poetry collection, Through the Woods, which was that um, collection of horror fairy tale uh, stories, the graphic uh, novel, um, Mama Scotch, uh, which was a memoir, 77 Fragments of a Familiar Ruin, which was a poetry collection that I loved, um, Moon of the Crested Snow, which was an um, Indigenous dystopian, which I thought was great, um, How to Pronounce Knife, which was a short story collection that won the Giller Prize last year, which um, was just kind of lukewarm for me, and I'm Afraid of Men. Um, so those were the eight Canadian books that I read. I did have one DNF this quarter, and that was Algorithms of Oppression. This I thought was going to be great, and I just found it very unsubstantial. Um, the author kept belaboring the same points over and over without diving into them. The subtitle to this was How Search Engines Reinforce Racism. And I don't think the author was answering that question and couldn't answer that question um, just based on the data that's available. Basically, all she was saying over and over again was search engines reinforce racism and biases. And here are some examples that I found when I was Googling things. But she never went beyond that. And I read like at least a quarter, if not a third of this book, and it just wasn't going anywhere. So I DNF'd it. Unfortunately, I'm really sad about this because it is a topic that I'm very interested in. I'm very interested in AI and search algorithms and algorithms in general and how they reinforce biases. Um, but there I just there was a whole lot of nothing in that book. Sorry. So that was the only DNF I had this past quarter. I also wanted to share my tops and bottoms. I only had one, well, two bottoms really. Um, the Poetry Collection Daybreak. I don't think it was necessarily bad or anything. It just stylistically, it was the type of modern poetry that just doesn't work for me, um, which is a real shame because I think that the poet had a lot of things to say. Um, if you like Ariel Twist's collection, Disintegrate, Dissociate, then you will like Daybreak. I didn't really like Daybreak and I just thought disintegrate dissociate was okay but I know a lot of people love it so I think a lot of people would like this it just wasn't for me um and the other bottom for me was how to pronounce a knife the short stories were just a little bit too short for me to get into but I thought the writing was really good and I think that I would rather read a full-length novel from the author whose name is um Suvakam Tamavongza um, because she really was good at building uh, characters, but the stories were too short for me to get into. And um, they didn't stick with me even like a day after I read them. I have a lot of tops. I will just share them with you very quickly because I want people to read these books. So one of my tops was How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. Um... This is a book set in Barbados and it has multiple points of view, which a lot of times doesn't work for me, but it really worked in this book and each different point of view added something new or interesting or helped develop the plot without rehashing details and the framework for the fable um, that was set up at the beginning of the book, the fable of the one-armed one sister, really was a great framework for the entire story to to hang from and it had a lot of different plot points that converged really nicely and the ending was satisfying and it just overall was um, well paced. It had a lot of things to discuss um, and kind of dissect while also being engaging and and fast-paced and kind of like a page-turning book. So loved that. 
Um, another one is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is a dystopian where the dystopian part of this novel doesn't really matter. It's the characters and what especially the protagonist is, is thinking and how she's coming to terms with the reality of her life. That's what the book is about. It's about um, her reminiscence and what matters in life and how you come to terms with your life. And I have a whole review, spoiler free, which I will link as well, but that was definitely um, on my tops list. Also Severance um, by Ling Ma. This is a zombie apocalypse book that is not about the zombies. It is about the ties we make with family, with work, and what brings meaning in our life. And it's about drudgery and monotony and is full of like millennial ennui and the atmosphere really worked for me. Um, another top I've already mentioned, The Spirit Catches You When You Fall Down by Anne Fadiman. This is a historical nonfiction, basically historical. Well, it tells the story of a girl who had severe epilepsy and um, she and her family were Hmong uh, refugees and it's basically about the culture clash, the misunderstanding, miscommunication and it treats both sides very fairly, both the Hmong family and the medical professionals. It gives really nuanced portrayals of what happened and why and the broader context and scope of um, how this happened and it was just phenomenal um and the last top i want to mention is the picture of dorian gray i have a whole reading vlog about it it is one wild ride lots of surprises lots of great discussion of art of morality of corruption of the value we place on youth and beauty and also just super engaging super fun and thrilling read highly recommend obviously all of my tops so that is my check-in for quarter two of 2021 i hope you enjoyed this if you read any of these books and want to talk about them please leave me a comment below otherwise i will chat with you in my next video thanks for watching talk to you later bye